Football Preview Show with Travis Lee on Channel 8 WMTW. The top performances of 2018, Riley Geyer of Coney, 15 for 19, 370 yards and four scores against Brewer. Jared Flaker of Scarborough, over 200 total yards and the hat trick. A rushing, a receiving, and a special team score against Wyndham. Mount Ararat's Riley Boren, 208 yards and three scores against Westbrook. Nobles' Matt Beerworth with three interceptions and over 100 yards of offense against York. And TA's Isaac Afelu, 222 yards and three touchdowns against Bonnie Eagle. Some great performances last year. We'll have a performance every Friday night, 11 o'clock throughout the football season. Blitz 8, check it out here. Now in Class C, the North has won four of the last five championships, including an improbable win last year at Fitzpatrick Stadium. Last year's Class C state final was the best of all the classes. Tyler Pelletier returned a punt 68 yards in the fourth quarter to lead Nokomis to a 13-12 win over Freiburg. It was the Warriors' first state championship and a dramatic one at that. Nokomis graduated 13 seniors. Of course, that group went winless their freshman and sophomore season. So. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. All right, we turn our attention to Class C, and our panel is back. Michael Hoffer and Randy Whitehouse. And, uh, you know, we here have a, a Class C that uh, looks wide open. Yeah, it does appear to be wide open this year. I think Class C South is going to be uh, extremely competitive with Wells there now. It's going to be interesting to see. Of course, they won Class C before they left for Class D. Uh, Levitt's another team that's perpetually in contention, and they have 21 lettermen back this year. So you got to watch for them, and they have some uh, good young players coming in that can push those veterans this year. Freiburg, I think, will take a step back, much like the Comis, they had an outstanding uh, senior class, but they're still going to be a tough team as well. Uh, it's going to be really fun to watch. I think uh, in Northern Maine, with the Comis losing all those seniors, I think you got to look at a, a traditional program like MCI to be the team to beat up there in, in Class C North. So many skills guys back, led by Wyatt Hathaway, and on defense they look pretty strong. Cam Jordan, 14 sacks a year ago. Michael, other contenders in the South? Yeah, I think you always have to talk about Cape Elizabeth, even though they had a little bit of a down year last year. A lot of a ton of athletes there. They have a new coach this year, Sean Green. Uh, some new energy. I know they're excited going into the year. I think Matt Laughlin might have a big season for the Capers. And another team is Freeport. You know, they won the Developmental League title last year. They're back in Class C, and uh, they have a lot of those kids who know how to win and who succeeded last year. Uh, their schedule is actually a little bit favorable for them. They don't have to play some of the powerhouse teams, so I think you might see the Falcons uh, be pretty competitive as the season goes on. But I think when all is said and done, you got to talk, start with the uh, talk with uh, Wells and Levitt. All right, guys, York, a team that uh, could score some points this year. Tegan Hines, strong arm quarterback, uh, had experience as a sophomore last year. Some good weapons for him coming up this fall. All right, now one of the headlining coaching changes of the offseason, Aaron Filio moving from Cape Elizabeth, where he took the Capers to the playoffs 13 straight years, to South Portland. We dropped in on the Red Riots in our training camp insider segment. Last practice at camp. Okay, you guys have had a great week. What an experience. Let's get after it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. This might be too big of a box for the big boys, you think? Yeah. We'll shrink it down. You need a big box. Yeah, you're a linebacker. I'm talking about like the big, the fat, the fatties. The fatties only tackle in a, in a phone booth. Quicker, 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 quicker. Don't be a back row guy. Don't be a second row guy. You're a first row guy, aren't you? Yeah, you're always up front. Okay, I'm creating a spear, right, or whatever. You guys can come up with some other garden tool or weapon if you want, okay? I'm, you can hold it a little bit tighter than that. I'm coming in right here, and I'm coming in with the rip. With the rip out there. Ball, get on it. Get on it. Nice job, Nate Allentine. Good job. Good job. Good job. Great job. See how he ran his feet through? See how he ran his feet through? Nice job, Sobes. Couple of water buffaloes here. Here we go. Set. Good job, guys. That's it. Nice job. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Gentlemen, remember, red wave mentality. All right, inside training camp at South Portland. South Portland's in Class B this year, but with 70 kids out for the team, perhaps the biggest team in Class B. They're all chasing Marshall, however. The Hawks look to continue their dynasty in Class B this year. They dominated in the state game last year, a 49 to nothing win over Brunswick. It was Marshall's fourth state title in five years and the third win in the state final 
over Brunswick as they have been strong under Alex Rotsko. Then we bring back our panel, Michael Hoffer and Randy Whitehouse. You guys are a couple front row guys in uh, Class B. It's a shakeup. 22 teams now. Portland Deering in South. Yeah, it's in some ways it's a lot like Class A used to be. We're seeing a lot of those former Class A teams now in B, and you know I think Marshwood is still the team to beat. Kennemunk's going to be very good, but you've got these new Portland area teams that a lot of people are going to be keeping their eye on. South Portland, you touched on nicely in that nice feature. I really think Coach Filio has his finger on the pulse of that community. Former star player and assistant coach in South Portland, he knows how badly they want a winner there. I think he's going to create a winner really quickly too. If not this year, give him two, three years, that team will be right back at the top. Portland's got a few younger kids, uh, but they, they've had a lot of success here the last four or five years. I think they'll get up to speed as the season goes on. And, uh, you know, Cheverson Deering, a couple other city teams, uh, they're going to be right there, I think, when all is said and done. I, I, B South might be the most intriguing of all the divisions in the whole state, and it's going to be a lot of fun to follow here over the next couple months. Yeah, Shevers feels good about their line. Sean Tompkins, a burner there that can help them out. Also, uh, up north, Coney, got a veteran quarterback in Riley Guyron. A uh, guy to watch out for, Jamal Cariglia, who had some dominant performances last year. Coney, uh, your thoughts on, uh, on Class B, Randy? Yeah, I agree with Mike as far as Class C, uh, Class B, B South. I think the uh, Portland area schools certainly throw a different element in there. I think in the north, I think you have to look at Brunswick once again as being one of the favorites. And Coney, as you mentioned, Lawrence is going to be very tough this year. Team to watch is Mount Blue this year. They have a new coach, Scott Franzos, moving over from Madison. He's going to open things up a little bit more, and there could be some uh, excitement at Caldwell Field this year. Absolutely. Uh, also going on, uh, Wyndham in Class B North. 17 freshmen and sophomores started at the end of the year for Matt Perkins' team that went 0-8. They're looking for a rebound. Also, Biddeford, eight returners on defense, and they got a stacked backfield. Scott Kelly leading some of their skills guys. They look to be a strong contender in B-South as well. And Kenny Bunk, five or six starters back. It was a team that had been so good for a couple of years. They look to try and keep up that consistency. Ryan Connors, a guy who emerged as a, one of the best ball carriers in the state last year. All right, let's take a look back at some of the games of the year from 2018. Week three, Lisbon hosting Spruce Mountain in overtime. Jack Bryant to Brandon Fry, the TD. Lisbon ties it. Lucas Francis to Robbie Dick for the TD. Francis, then the two-point conversion to win it. How about that? Class B playoffs. Greeley and Bitterford tied 14-14 with under 30 left. Will Shoemaker jumps the route and wins it on the pick six. And both Kenny Bunk Marshwood games are worthy of game of the year, so we put them both together. Ryan Connors, field goal with one second left, gave Kenny Bunk the win of the regular season. Then in the regional title game, Justin Bryant, a TD catch on fourth and goal is the difference, 14-13. The Hawks would take it. Our games of 2018, and we'll be back to talk more 2019 after this. <laughs> 